Welcome back to Grim 3D. I know it's been a while, things have been pretty busy in life, but uh, I'm back. We got a bunch of new subscribers, so welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be messing with the Maker Select to reduce vibration. It's probably going to happen in a couple of videos, so stay tuned. I've been using my Maker Select now for over a year and I've never actually messed with I've never actually messed with tightening the belts or anything. I've just used the stock spring-loaded belt tighteners, but I've noticed in a lot of my prints lately that I've been getting these ripples and they're getting worse. They seem to happen on the X and the Y. This is a little ripple test that I printed a while ago, but you can see that there are ripples before and after any movement of the printer itself and hopefully you can see that in the light. Here's another example. This is just a uh, calibration cube. So it doesn't have the edges in it that, that amplify the ripples but you can still see in the when the light hits it just right that it's rippling pretty good especially after this Y. This one that actually has square corners, you can see even more of those ripples around each one of these edges. That corner right there is actually pretty bad. Where it moved to print that X in the wall, it's got a lot of ripples as well. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through and we are going to install some belt tensioners. I got these belt tensioners. This is one belt tensioner. I got this off of Thingiverse and I'll put the link down below and the attribution. It's not my design, but it's a pretty good design, I think. It's got pretty good reviews. People have been using it. I printed it twice. I want to do one, add one print to the Y belt and one of the prints to the X belt but I read in the comments and you can read them there yourself the original design which is this purple one is a little bit tall from you know where my fingers are from top to bottom and it rubs on your belt as it goes back and forth which I'm sure reduces the life expectancy of your belt so this one was added in as a remake and it is actually instead of going this direction the tall way between the belts it connects to the back of the print head this direction making it from top to bottom quite a bit shorter so that it doesn't rub the belt as it goes back and forth so we're going to try adding these to the maker select and never tried this before it should be pretty easy not a big deal so let's get going so here's the back of my maker select plus um, notice this is the belt I'm gonna work with first this belt does not seem tight this belt is you can move it all over the place there's no there's no strength in that and I think that this spring tension right here is probably at its end of life it's not holding very well anymore at all to start this job, I think I'm going to have to get some stuff out of the way first. So let's go ahead and remove this cover. And then we'll pull this connector up off the board. I do have it connected with another piece of wire over here that's actually for some lights that I have on my printer. And then I can go ahead and remove this screw that the belt runs on. There we go. I'm just going to grab my flush cutters. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these nylon zip ties very carefully and make sure I don't cut the belt. And I'm going to actually remove this factory spring tensioner. I'm going to put that back on. 
So now I'm going to put this, I'm going to move this belt kind of out of the way. I'm going to put in place of where the belt was, I'm going to use the same screw. I'm going to install the first half of my tensure. I did 3D print these out of PETG so that they would be heat resistant. I don't know that they're going to encounter that much heat here, but I've read that they work okay with PLA as well, but that they really don't last a whole long time. So I've got that part of the tensioner in place. I'm going to install this. This is a nylon lock nut. And it's going to go right in that slot right there. You've got to make sure that you get a flat on the top and the bottom, and it slips right in. Then here's the second part of the tensioner, which will go like this, this direction. This is an M3 screw. I'm going to go ahead and screw it, start it. I'm not going to put it in very far because I want to be able to use that space for creating tension on my belt. I'm going to screw that in to the, the nut that I placed in there just a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure that my belt is about as tight as I can pull it and I'm going to work the belt itself into that slot on the tensioner. Some people say this is a little bit difficult but we'll stick with it for a second and see what we can do. Well, it's not going to go around this screw head, so I'm going to have to pull this back out. So I'm going to pretend like I know where that I know where that used to be, so I can get my belt the right length, and then see if I can get it in there without the screw in the way. That was much easier, except I may have made it too, not in the right place, too long. I'm going to use a small Allen wrench to kind of push it in the groove a little bit better, make sure it's seated properly. You'll notice that right here, the belt's teeth grab each other so that it won't slip out. And let's see if... My M3 bolt is long enough now. No, it is not, so I'm going to have to try again. So I'll wiggle the belt out, and I will make it just a few millimeters longer. Reinsert it, make sure I've got it pushed in really well. And try one more time with my M3 screw. Still doesn't seem to be long enough. And third time is the charm, I guess. Oh, a few more teeth on the belt. Push the belt back in the groove. Bring in my M3 nut, hopefully the last time.
I'm going to carefully tighten it down. I don't want to go too crazy on the tightness before I get a chance to test it on a print. I'm already feeling much better tension on the belt than it had before. I do, however, think I'm going to go a little bit tighter. So the tension on that belt is feeling pretty good now. And I do have a little distance between the belt and the tensioner as the head moves back and forth. It's not touching. So some people try to just tie this belt down, which I guess I could do with a piece, but this is actually quite a considerable tail now. So I'm going to just use my flush cutters and cut it off. And now maybe you don't want to do this. That's fine. Um, you don't want to cut your belt, but I do actually have extra belts in my possession already. So that doesn't hurt my feelings any. And then um, I'm going to fold this last little tail underneath on itself to try to help it stay out of the way even more. And by the way, you can order extra belts online. There's plenty of places to get them. So um, even if everything went bad, I'd have an option to get a whole new belt. I'm going to go ahead and zip tie this with my nylon zip tie. So it stays down nice and tight and out of the way. Using my flush cutters, cut off the end of my zip tie. And then I'm going to double check and make sure that with my new setup, I'm able to go all the way Notice I'm hitting here. That zip tie is getting in the way. I need this to go all the way to this limit switch. So we're going to have to try again with the zip tie. So one more try on the zip tie. And we'll make sure that the locking edge of the zip tie is in the front instead of in the back. And then cut it flush again. Now check one more time to make sure that it goes all the way to the limit switch without any obstructions. And of course we didn't mess with this side, so we'll go all the way, all the way to that side without any obstructions. So now we just got to button it back up. Notice the, the tension on this is actually quite a bit better. I know you can't feel that, but it actually feels pretty good. And I can tighten it up anytime I want just by turning the screw. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my ribbon cable again. And then I'm going to reinstall cover. And there you have it, an X belt tensioner installed, ready to go. Hopefully that will reduce my vibrations. So now we're going to do the same thing with the X belt, but we're going to use this other design because it, the X belt is supposed to have a little more headroom. We'll see when we get in there. Maybe we'll have to reprint something and... So here's the part we're going to be messing with. Um, this belt actually feels tighter than the other one by quite a bit, but let's continue anyways. I'm going to remove the side that has the tensioner on it because I think that's one the side that gives us enough room, enough space for it to clear this 
pulley on the motor here, the drive gear. On this one, I think I'm going to start by removing the belt, which is held on with these two zip ties. And then removing this OEM tensioner. Once that's off, the screw pretty much comes out super easy. And you notice I can't get a Allen wrench in there, which is fine. I've got my tensioner here, and I've already got a M3 nylon lock nut installed on the tensioner. So I'm going to go ahead and screw that back in. I'm going to make sure I get it in about as far as it was before. It could go a little farther, but you want to make sure that the screw doesn't stick through and rub on this piece of metal and it really doesn't matter if it's how far through it is now we've got the fun of installing the belt at the proper length into the tensioner again about as tight as we can get it with our tensioner as long as we can Pull it. Okay, so I got that. It's going in there. That was a little bit difficult. But I'll make sure that I'm pressing it all the way in with a small Allen wrench. And I got it fairly tight to begin with, which is great. So it did take me a couple of tries on this one as well. It was pretty tough to get it in there, but that's fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten this down to get my belt tension where I want it. Nice and tight. Okay, so that's definitely tighter than it was before. Feels pretty good. Shouldn't deflect a whole lot. I'm not sure there is an exact measurement or way of measuring the tension on these belts, but that feels pretty good. Tighter than it was before. I did have to crank it down quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I can go all the way to the stop on this, which I can't yet. The belt tail is getting in the way. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that because once again, I have extra belts already. And now it moves all the way to the limit switch. And it moves all the way back. I don't have the belt rubbing on the top of my new tensioner, which is fantastic. Now the only thing left to do is to button it up and try it out, see if we got rid of any of the ripples. So here are the vibration test blocks. This is the original one. This one is the new one. 
that just printed with the tightened belts. I'm not sure that I got the result I expected. I think that I'm seeing a bunch of the same vibration ripples in the faces here. The original one seems like the vibrations are a little bit more uh, pronounced. The new block, the vibrations are just a little bit, they're still almost in exactly the same place, but they're a little bit less prominent. If you look on this side right here, the Y side, and remember I finished the, I replaced the Y and the X belts, belt tensioners. There's a pretty decent sized ridge on both of them. The ridge is more pronounced on the original cube. The secondary ridge that's in the middle there is looks more pronounced. Um, it's a little bit sharper ridge on the new one. I mean, there's still a ridge there, but it's it takes up less space. It's a pretty good sized ridge right there off of that edge that's right next to the Y. Um, with the tightened belts, I can actually see one, two, three small ridges across the face there. When printing these um, depressed holes, you can see pretty clearly that the original one is a little bit messier than the new one, the newly printed one with the tightened belts. Um, but I'm not super happy with these results. I'd really like to see my printer not have that kind of resonance or that kind of ripples in it from vibrations. And like I said uh, before, this is, it's kind of new. So either something's getting worn out or loose on my printer, or uh, maybe it's something I've done to it that's causing it. Next, I'm gonna try removing the rubber dampener mounts that I put on the stepper motors that could be causing most of what I'm seeing here. So we'll look at that in another video. So not fantastic results, but you saw how it's done. It did make a difference. I just think I'm going to need to do a little bit extra work to get rid of these ridges entirely. Well, that's a wrap for this episode of Grim 3D. We tried something out. Kind of worked, didn't work real well. We'll have to try some more stuff out in the future. Want to say one more time, thank you and welcome to our new subscribers. And we'll see you out there. Doo -doo -doo.